everybody, this is Good News with Deborah Paul. Another day, another week, another month. You made it and I made it. Now, you know when you see me, you see celebration, inspiration of some sort. And I'm always making some good old noise. Make some noise. This is Deborah Paul. Good news. Now, today, I want to just share with you a little quote that I read that said that when love and skill meets, you get a masterpiece. Now that comes from John Rustin. And I was so inspired by that because the love and the skill. Now you know that you were born for a purpose and everything for that purpose is right inside of you. So that love for your gifts and your talents needs to come out, man. And with skill on top of that, come on, the world needs you, masterpiece. Now with me today, I'm so excited because I have Stephanie Adams, some dance champion, uh, star of the, uh, she starred in the Bring It On movie. And so I'm so excited. Make some noise, Stephanie. Nice to have you here with me. Cheers. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm good, and you? Mm, I'm fantastic. Always good chatting to people mm -hmm. that, that inspires, you know. So now that was my kind of intro, but who do you say Stephanie Adams is? Well, I'm a professional dancer, choreographer, Whoa. performer as well, you know, show-wise and all of that. Um, yeah, that's who I am. Come on. Mm. Mm. Now, you know why I, I really wanted to chat with you? Because you had all these professional dancer, um, first prize of this and internationally. Yeah. This is my thing, <laughs> internationally. And where do you come from, man? I come from retreat. I stay in retreat now. I grew up in Grassy Park. Now, this is the thing. Now, you know, good news is the place where we make noise about the good things that are happening in our areas. Grassy Park, down the road from the Lotus River. Can anything good come from Grassy Park, Lotus River? Come on, make some noise. There's so much evidence. So, Stephanie, tell us now, when did you start with this whole dancing? I started at the age of four. Mm -hmm. My mommy actually put me into it because she was a dancer. Okay. So I started at Krish and then I went into a dance school in retreat called Cavde Dance Theatre. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> But that time, <laughs> I remember. Dance theater. Yes. So that's where I started, and I've been dancing ever since, 24 years. Wow, yeah. so that makes you now like 26, you know? No. So, anyway, because <laughs> you look so good. But dancers, I mean, they always look good, hey? Yeah, I think it's because we're busy all the time, and our bodies are always going, and we're not sitting around doing nothing. And fitness yeah, levels, fitness and you're eating the right things, and not stuff really like that. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm saying we that. Eat anything and everything. Listen, yeah. so, um, so when I was reading about you, okay, I, I was so interested because here's this girl coming from Grassy Park Retreat, went to Cavda, and now you were on this international platform. Uh, expand about that. Um, so in 2015, so there's this competition called SABOD, South Africa Body of Dance. And then there's, the, then there's an overseas competition that oversees all of it called IDEO. So in 2015, that year, I placed first in, first in South Africa. And then I went overseas to compete in the women's section. So wait, hold on. So now, yeah. Yeah. You, like, in our terms, you came first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what, yes. What, what did that all entail? Um, you do... A number of competitions. You do one here in Cape Town, there's one in Joburg, there's one in Durban. There's actually two in Joburg. So I did one in Cape Town and two in Joburg. Mm. And then I obviously placed first. You either have to place, it's a whole system like top three, then they calculate it all. And, it's just and how many system. contestants are involved? So many. Sure. So many. Like thousands? No, not that. Not like that hundreds. Extreme, like hundreds, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. out of that, hundreds. You like? Yeah, but in our section at that time, there could be like 20 in that section because we were like World Trial Circuit, so we had to qualify to be in World Trial Circuit and 16 and over. Okay, yeah. and so that was just ballet or contemporary? That was hip hop. Hip hop? Yeah. Okay. And then I went overseas to Italy in that year and I placed fourth. So in after being that. first year, then obviously. You go and compete with against other countries. Such as? All the countries, Italy, 
England, all wow. of them. So it's an international. It's an international competition. And what was that experience like? Nerve-wracking. I can like, imagine. I was sweating. Because if you take it, well, I take it round by round. Yeah. So you focus on that round to make through to the next round. Yeah. And it was absolutely amazing and stressful at the same time. And it was all hip hop. All hip hop that we did, but there is another section called show dance. Okay. So that's with your sequence, leotard, and yeah. What is now the sequence leotard? Would that be the ballet? The not really ballet, more modern mm -hmm. mm, and flexibility that type of thing. Sure. So so eventually at that competition mm -hmm. in 2015, mm -hmm. what was that called? IDO. What does it stand for? International Dance Organization. Wow. So at the oh. International Dance organization mm -hmm. 2015 now they come what was your positioning there fourth fourth yes whoa out of no there's a lot of people there oh yeah. my so that's like, what i'm that saying like <laughs> <laughs> but even like forced to come there wow and here you are kafda man <laughs> kafda whoa big up from kafda i i know kafda yeah. it was my dream to also you know be part of kafda dance um, theater, theater. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yo, and that is in retreat. And it, for me, what's just so amazing is that you went on an international level, mm. level, and we are in, and you come from Grassy yeah. Park. This is what I'm celebrating. This is what I'm making a noise about. The good things, the diamonds. And when they said you were fourth, what did you feel like? I don't. I don't. I think I froze. I don't think I realized <laughs> it was me. Because even making it to the final, the top five, I know a top six. You don't believe it, you're like, out of so many people, it's unbelievable because I'm very hard on myself when I dance. So I would be like, oh my word, I just messed up in the round before, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Sure. And then I'm like, I actually made it. And it was me and another girl, um, she plays sixth, so two girls from South Africa placed in the top six. Oh my word. Which is amazing. It's totally amazing. Yeah. We're making good, crazy noise. Stephanie Adams, professional dancer. Right after this, we're chatting some more. <laughs>Guys, this is Good News with Deborah Paul checking with the professional dancer all the way from Grassy Park. So now, okay, I forgot to tell you guys, you know, why I'm wearing this knee pad. I just thought I have Stephanie here with me as a dancer. So I just thought I'd, you know, jazz it up with a look just to fit in with you. <laughs> Stephanie, you have been part of the movie called Bring It On. Cheers, Smack. Yes, cheers, Smack. Tell us about how did you get to do that? Well, that happened in 2016. We, so they have an audition process, so you go the first time you audition, then you wait to hear if you have a callback. Mm -hmm. So obviously I heard the callback and there were a lot of dancers, like could be more than 30 of us at the callback. Was it here in South Africa? In South Africa, yeah, oh. in Cape Town. And then the international choreographer was there, his name is Tony G. Okay. So he taught us a piece that day at the callback and then he broke us up into f like groups of four. And then obviously I have to do the piece for him and then I was in a group with just guys. Okay. Which is like, uh, because you know, guys are very strong. Hardcore. Yes. Yeah. And then he, the international choreographer told me, he's like, you're in a group full of guys, now you better like <laughs> show me what you made of. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yo, is this guy from like America telling me this. And, and it was anyway, a group of guys, oh my word. And then everybody watches you audition. So all the dancers are also there auditioning, they're sitting watching you. And then anyway, it went well, and then I heard, you know, that I'm in it, and we were like, so there's different groups in the actual movie. So you have the Rebels, which is the main team with all the international dancers, and then the Truth. And then there were eight of us Cape Townians in the Rebels with the international dancers. Come on. So four girls, four guys, and then the truth was Joburg cheerleaders with Cape Town dancers. The experience was unbelievable. Like we were learning how to be proper cheerleaders, like the lifts in the I air know. and all of that. You didn't do that before though? No, not so until that How day. long did they give you to We rehearsed for three months. Oh, wow. Yeah, and we did like the training for like two weeks. Gosh, man. 
And what did that experience like when you were through with it? What did it like? Wow, I did this. It was amazing. Because yeah. you learn stuff you wouldn't normally like learn on a daily basis. Like all the cheerleading, the stunts and like I remember the one rehearsal, he made us do it like in a, in a line so each of us would go up. And I didn't realize my fear <laughs> of oh. being so high until that day like I was in tears because I almost fell because it's just two people and you end up on the one guy's hands and you like a person above the floor and you on their hands and I, you're anticipating will they catch me that was my thing I was like nobody's going to grab me even though it's two guys I was like nope and I fell and I was in tears and he's like it's okay like you haven't done this before, it's fine. Oh, wow, Just, wow, what a choreographer. And then I did it with another person and then it was okay. But it's an experience and Fantastic. all. And you learn so much from him, like work ethic wise. He's very much like you come here to do what you have to do. So you speak about ethics mm. as, as, a, as a dancer. Yeah. What are, what are those ethics? How you conduct yourself, how you handle yourself in rehearsal how hard you work, like you're not coming to rehearsal and you're laxy-daisy and you're yeah. sitting on the side doing nothing. Uh -huh. Like you're pushing and you're working and you're trying to do everything yeah. to the best of your ability. And being on time. Yes. Hey? Yes. If they say call time 4.30, you better be there <laughs> for 15, for you 15, know? exactly. <laughs> yeah, but that was an experience. It was really... Wow. It was amazing. Would you say that is, was, was one of your highlights? Yes, yes it was. Uh, mm. And, and, and um, so, like I, I was thinking now when you speak about ethics and the excellence, mm. you know, people will, will, will book you sometimes, you are skilled, yes, and the other one is skilled, yes, mm. but which one? Then they'll check up on the excellence and the, and the ethics, right? Yes, and sometimes look-wise. Mm -hmm. If your look doesn't, especially with commercials, yeah. if your look doesn't suit their brand or what they're going for, they won't book you. Whether you are the best dancer at the audition, whether you're like, working hard, if your look doesn't suit their brand, then they won't book you. That's right. Speaking about commercials, mm. this lady has been, <laughs> I mean, uh, 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 on commercials such as um, Emirates, mm. um, Hennessy, Toyota, Compare the Market, Edgar's, I think there are a few that I'm missing. That was so much <laughs> fun, eh? I mean, yeah. gosh. Listen, please uh, check out Stephanie Adams on her page and you're watching Good News with Deborah. Bye. And we're back, and this is Good News with Deborah Paul. I'm having so much fun with Stephanie, a professional dancer, been to places, and yet you are so grounded. That is so admirable. And that is the one thing, Stephanie, that I always say to um, us who come from where we do, our places, and we actually rise mm -hmm. in our purposes. Humility is a thing. Keep the humility, yeah. no matter where you go. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And that's really what I'm experiencing. You're so grounded. What does that for you? I don't know. I think just how I grew up. Which is like, how? Well, my mother always taught me to be humble, you know. Even though you've achieved a lot, doesn't mean you have to have an attitude about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, just how I grew up, how I was raised. And you know, the, 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 the thing that I love sometimes, uh, many times, about when people come into a space humbly and they don't come with the attitude yes. and, you know, yes. here I am and I'm doing my thing. They just chilled mm. and now they say, Stephanie Adams, could you please do your thing? And there you do. The, the surprise factor mm. of, whoa! But she was just sitting there and just calmly. That for me is also always such a powerful thing, you know? Yeah. Now, when you started doing dance, um, your parents, I'd love <laughs> to know. Because now, obviously, they, 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 when you were younger, they would encourage you. Yes. But as you grew older, they realized, hey, this child's going professionally. Isn't she going to get a job? Yeah. That's, <laughs> a I real job? That's like the perception with the arts. Yes. Like people assume you can't make a living out of it, and it's not an actual job when it is. Totally. So after I matriculated, I actually studied law for five years. So I have an LLB. Another one. Woohoo. Yeah. And you have an LLB. Yes. Where did you study? Univ um, Western Cape. Fantastic. 
So then I studied for five years, got my degree, graduated, and this was the beginning of 2016 because graduation is always the year after. Yeah. And then and your parents were like, yes, she's got a real job. Yes, they were all like, <laughs> yes, you know. And then I was like, no. <laughs> Because I went for an interview at the law firm and then you are, they obviously explained to you your hours and all of that. And I was like, but then I won't be able to dance. And I was like, this doesn't work, you know, for me. Like, yes. It's not my passion and ever. Told my mother, I don't think, you know, it's going to be for me. And then she was not happy at first because, you know, like, dance is also perceived as you can't have a stable income. Then she said, okay, I must make it work for myself. And I have, like, since then, I've been busy all the time, going to Joburg, you know, in Cape Town. So it's been going well. And wow. now she's obviously, you know, supportive. Not now only, but over the years, she's seen, like, I can make it work for myself. Sure, so you've proved yeah. something about yeah. the arts for a whole lot of us, eh? Because, you know, like, for me, um, when they used to, oh, oh you sing... Uh, but what's your real mm, job? Mm. This is mm. my real job. Like even now, people will be like, what are you doing with your life? I'm like, I'm dancing. It's my profession. And they're like, but didn't you study law? And I was like, yes, but I'm, I'm happy doing this. Yeah. I don't want to sit and do something that's going to make me miserable at the end of the day. And, and then you feel that fulfillment when you do something mm. that you're passionate about. Yes, hey? exactly. What do we expect now? What more from So Stephanie? I just started my own dance school. Oh, wow. It's called The Dance Block. I haven't launched properly because I'm busy with my website still. So that's what I'm looking at starting officially from next year. And where is that? I'm still looking for a venue. Great stuff. Venue hunting is... And anybody watching, listening, want to say something, help <laughs> Stephanie. Check her out on the Facebook. The other thing is... Um, when you dance, because mm -hmm. hey, I sometimes look at dancers and when they really project that movements and whatever, um, they obviously dance to what was choreographed for them. For mm -hmm. them. But when you dance, mm -hmm. what is the story that you want to bring across? I think just what I'm feeling or how the music makes me feel, yeah. the specific song I've chosen and what message I want to bring through that uh -huh. piece or specific um, song I've chosen. Yeah, that's expressing myself through the music, basically. You have not just had um, the top times of mm -mm. winning competitions and getting, whoa, I'm on that commercial. Yeah. I always say that's the 30%. Mm. The other 70% is the hard work, it's the, it's the tumbling, work, yeah. the stumbling. Can you recall maybe um, one moment where you really wanted that gig and he didn't get it. I do actually. It was also a movie a year before Bring It On. And they actually phoned me. I'm not going to give the movies No, name. for sure. <laughs> they actually phoned me and they were like, okay, you know, you booked the job and whatever. But that time I was busy writing my finals at university. Then I went in on the first day of rehearsals and they were calling up everybody's name but mine. Oh, wow. But I'm sitting there and I'm like, but I was told, you know, to come today. And then the, the lady, I think it was a lady, she was like, um, but we were told you're unavailable. Oh, so okay. I'm like, no, who said this? Because nobody picked up, nobody bothered picking up the phone to tell me I shouldn't come in. I was like, you got my hopes up to come exactly. sit here and just crush me in front of people I dance with. Wow. Like, it's not okay. How did you deal with that? I actually confronted them and then I, d I think the one, the director or one of the producers came then. I was like, this is unprofessional. Totally. You cannot treat a person like that and not even bother to pick up the phone. And then yeah. after that, I was like, wow, you know, like this is actually a, like it crushes you because you've of got course. excited about of course, being in this thing. About your passion. And then this, they just like, no. And then... The, the, those days and weeks afterwards, how did you counsel yourself? I was actually, I was fine afterwards. It's like, maybe it's not meant for me. Um, and then I just got up and I did whatever I wanted to do, you and know, you proceeded push myself. with your passion. But there's also other moments where other people make you feel as if you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. And you have to just fight through it and tell yourself, you know, what you are and push through and do your best that you can. 
Lastly, what would your message be for anybody who is, mm. who have their passion and they would like to become, you know, what they, they have this dream. Yeah. What would your message be? Push through mm. and do it and just make it work for yourself. And if other people are telling you you can't do it, it's not about them, it's about you. Come on. Yeah. There you got it. You push through. Like when I was looking at you, I was just like talking about the highs, but then mm. afters, no, no, no. <laughs> Life is not just about yeah. highs, you know. Your dream and the process of becoming that within your dream does not just consist of highs. You have some lows. You mm. confront it and you push through. Listen, this is good news with Deborah Pearl, Stephanie Adams. Check her out on her Facebook. Say something like this. Thank mm -hmm. you.